Hello. Please welcome to this video. So this happens to be our third video in the study of complex analysis. And note that in our previous video, we were able to derive the Couch-Riemann's equation, which is used to determine whether a given function is analytic or not. So in this third video, what we are going to do is to find out whether a given complex valued function is analytic or not using the couch riemanns equation. So we are going to solve questions. So by the way, I'm Boydo Kran Randolph, a, a final year student of mathematics here in USD. Please don't forget to like the video if it helps you and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And thank you very much. So Recall from our previous video, that's the one under the couch human equations that um, we have these equations. So we're able to derive this equation, right? So if you don't understand how we came by these equations, then you can go through the previous video in the playlist. So <coughs> let's quickly take a theorem. Okay, so this theorem says that we should let f be equal to u plus iv. So where u is the real part and v is the imaginary part. And we should let this be defined in the domain D in the complex plane where u and v are real valued. Then f of z is analytic on D if and only if u of x, y and v of x, y have continuous first order partial derivative that satisfy the couch Riemann equations. So in simple ways, a given function is said to be analytic if it satisfies the couch Riemann's equation. Okay. So let's take quick examples. So the first question says is the function what we have here analytic? So we have to find out whether this is analytic or not. Okay. So from the theorem know that we have let f is equal to u plus iv so by making a comparison to we can call this f or c it doesn't change anything u plus iv then it means that comparing to the question our u is equal to x and our v is equal to y so that is what you can find here but note that u is a function of x and y and v is a function of x and y as well. You can just write u or v, but you should know that u is a function of x and y, and v is also a function of x and y. So after having this, then we have to try and find out if the first order partial derivatives of our u and v are continuous, if they exist. And if they exist, do they satisfy these two equations here? If they do, then the given function is said to be analytic, right? So I wrote a, a simple introduction and um, explanation here for you. It says for the function to be analytic, then it has to satisfy the couch Riemann equations. And these are the equations, okay? So we have u of x, y equals x. So that means that we have to find partial derivatives here. So differentiating our function u with respect to x is going to give us 1 with respect to y will give us 0 because we don't have a y component here alright then when it comes to with a v v of x y is equal to y so when we differentiate with respect to x the partial derivative of v with respect to x is going to give us 0 since we don't have any x component here and the partial derivative of v with respect to y is going to give us 1 Right. I hope you understand the partial derivatives. All right. So if you have troubles understanding this, then the best thing for you to do is to go and revise your multi-calculus, how to find partial derivatives. Okay. So we can see that from our partial derivatives, del u del x is equal to del v and del y, and all of them is gives us 1. So this is equal to this. 
Then we also know that the of n del s equals negative del u del y, which is equal to zero. That's these two are also the same, right? And we know that they satisfy the Calciuman equations. So hence the function z equals x plus i y is said to be analytic. So this is how we find out whether a given function is analytic or not. So let's take a second example. So the second example says show that the function f of z equals this exponential function here satisfy the Calciuman equations. Okay. So with this we will have to work around the given exponential function before we'll be able to apply our formula on it. But it's quite simple. So this was the function we were given. But we know that this z here is a complex number and it is written as x plus i y. When you try to replace the z with x plus i y, then we are going to have what we have here. But you should know that um, for exponential function, one property is that when you have e, let's say a plus b, this is the same as e a times e b. So when you have this that we have here, we can um, use the same identity here and we are going to have what we have here. Okay, so when you have what we have here, you should know that with this component, because you have the imaginary part there, we can use the OLS method. Then with the OLS method, when you have, it's, it's, in, it's simple form, is E i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. But in this case, we have y, so we replace the theta with y. So that gives us what we have here. I hope it's well understood up to this point. Alright, so from there, then we can make substitution. So now the whole of this is what we have here. So making substitution is going to give us what we have here. Then when you multiply it through, we finally have this. So it is this particular function that we are going to use and not the form in which it was given because in the form in which it was given, it's very difficult for us to find out whether it is analytic or not using the Calciuman equations. So now by making comparison, we know the whole of this happens to be our u and the whole of this happens to be our v. So that's the explanation so by making comparison. Right, so now we have our u and our v. The next thing is to find for partial derivatives. So for the function to be analytic, it has to satisfy the Calciuman equations, which I've quoted them here for you. So that means you should make sure you know what the Calciuman equations are. Since whenever you're asked to find whether a function is analytic or not, you have to recall it and try to work around it. So now this is our u, right? So we try to find the partial derivative of u with respect to x. And realize that when you differentiate the exponential function, you get the same thing, right? So here, because this sign here doesn't contain any x, so sine y becomes a constant. So we hold that and we differentiate this, but this also gives us e power x. Then we have this. Then in this case, since we are differentiating u with respect to y partially, we are going to hold this constant instead since um, it doesn't contain y. Then when we differentiate sine y, we get cos y. So this gives us this. Then when you come to the vein to we do our partial derivative. So our partial derivative of very with respect to x will give us e x cos y. And that with respect to y will give us negative e x sine y. Because when you um, differentiate cos, you get negative sine. So when you come here, then we can realize we realize that um, our del v del x is equal to del u del y. So you can see these two are the same, and you can see that our del u del x is equal to negative del v del y, or del v del y is equal to negative del u del x, right? So that's what you can see here. So since the Calciuman rules. Or equations are satisfied, then that means the function that we had as f of z equals 
is is said to be analytic let's take the third and final example so we have z equals x minus i y and the question is is it analytic so now that when you make comparison we are going to have our u to be x and our v to be negative y so when you find the partial derivatives of u with respect to x and y you have these so and when you find the partial derivatives of variance with respect to x and y we will have these I hope it's well understood. <laughs> so if you're having problem understanding how the partial derivatives is done, I suggest you go back and watch a video on how to find partial derivatives, okay? Because it's very important in understanding what you are doing. So here we can see that our del u del x, that's this one here, is not equal to del v and del y. So these two are not the same. So meaning the Kalchiman equation is not satisfied. So since it is not satisfied, then it means the function that we had is not analytic. Okay. So actually that's it. So if you didn't understand anything, you can go back and play the video and realize that everything will be simple. So there is a trial question here for you. And the question says I showed that this your U and this your V they satisfy the Kalchiman equation. So those functions there all right so in our next video we'll be talking about the calculation equation in polar form so sometimes you have it in polar form in our next video we are going to derive it and solve an example on that so thank you very much and i wish you all the best